Reef DVM's coming at you today with an update on the sprayer and what we put on our fields, particularly what products we use. We get this question a lot here on the farms because a lot of people like the fact that we don't use harsh chemicals. So here it is. This is what we put on. We use Cocoa Wet and we use Bill's Perfect Fertilizer 6, 11, and 5. Um, we're going to use the uh, new 110 gallon John Deere sprayer here and uh, we're going to put the organic fertilizers on. Um, in this case, we're going to put on our Timothy Brome and Clover fields. This stuff really works well for us. Um, I like it a lot better than the commercial products. Um, the cocoa wetting agent is basically like a cocoa oil. It helps take the fertilizer and make it stick to the leaves uh, of, of the grasses. And then henceforth, they get the, they get the uh, nutrients better, faster, quicker. It doesn't, you know, just get, you know, worked off by evaporation and runoff. Uh, we use about one cup per hundred gallons of warm water. And we do use warm water because that's what um, the company recommends. Uh, we buy this product. Um, I believe you can get this product from Spray and Grow Direct, but we buy it from an online source um, a lot of times. So it works out good cost-wise for us because we buy several gallons of each at a time. Um, the Bill's Perfect Fertilizer uh, is a 6 11, 5, and it also likes warm water. So we do fill this with warm water from the barn. So what I do is I try to get it probably at least half full of the tank and then um, I dump the cocoa wet in and then that starts to, starts to mix in. Um, I don't like to dump it in before I add the water because it goes right down to the bottom and I think it's harder than for it to mix up. Um, and then once I've got that in, then I pour the Bill's Perfect Fertilizer in. So the cocoa wet, putting in about a cup per hundred gallons um, the Bill's Perfect Fertilizer comes in a 154 ounce jug, but basically that bottle works pretty good for about 100 gallons of water. So um, for me, I'm basically going to put in one cup of the Cocoa Wet and then the whole container of the Bill's Perfect Fertilizer. Fill it up with warm water. Um, I'll set the boom about 18 inches off the ground. Travel speed, I'm going to shoot for about 4 miles an hour. Um, you know, to get a nice coverage pattern, uh, basing that on the literature of what the uh, T-Jet spray nozzles can put out and kind of the quantity of fertilizer that I want to put down, and then I'll go spray the fields. I like to spray the fields right after the first cut. Um, I've got some people that always ask me, how do our fields look so nice? Why do we get such good price for our hay? Well, in Minnesota, it's very wet in April and May, so we get a lot of rains. It just seems like the fields take off on their own, and you know we really don't have to to worry about fertilizing first crop. Second crop, you know, comes in uh, about the say end of June, beginning of July here, and when that crop starts to grow into the field, we're into the drier periods. We've cut the hay off it. We've traveled on the field a lot. It just seems like the the nutrition is is harder to come by for the plants at that point in the year. So going out and, you know, spending, you know, 50, 60 bucks per probably three, four acres seems worth it to me to get a higher yield um, and a better quality grass for the hay bales. So here we are. We've dropped the booms. I'm just going to jump in, um, kick on the PTO, and, and spray the field. I like to do a two-pattern method. So normally I go um, east to west. Um, and then I go all the way around the edges at least once, um, and I overlap by about two feet just to make sure that I get it right. In the past, I've done this with a 55-gallon boomless sprayer. I found it hard to control drift um, if it was windy, uh, and I certainly found it a little difficult, too, when you had bumps and ruts in the field. Uh, I like the boom sprayer better. I can get closer to the grass. I can be more exact with my placement. I'm picking a day here um, where it's about 75 degrees out. It's actually um, closer to late afternoon. I don't like spraying in the morning. I feel like the, the field just gets hot and tries to evaporate my product throughout the day. If I put it on at 6, 7 o'clock at night, um, it gets dark around 8, 30, 9 o'clock. Uh, the grass gets a chance to, to absorb some of it, and if not, it sits over the whole entire night and gets absorbed in with the morning dews. And I feel that's worked really well for us. Um, this particular boom sprayer does not have the foam option kit on it because it was like $300. Uh, 
Um, but I, you know, don't really need it at this time of the year because the grass has just been cut and it's short. And I'm normally able to follow my tire tracks pretty well to see where I've been on the previous, you know, turn or corner or path. But this is how we fertilize our field. Um, we do this with all our hay fields. Um, we actually do it with a couple of other crops too. We like to use the organic fertilizers and the cocoa wet. It works great. Appreciate you watching, folks. Please subscribe and we'll continue to make great videos like this. Thanks.